it is it, it's very simple to just throw it throw throw something but then you have to control everything mm -hmm. and i was able to i still do that now even after the injury which happened what's third eight years ago mm -hmm. I can now I can you know press 150 pound dumbbells, 175 pound dumbbells, mm -hmm. 200 pound dumbbells, and I don't throw the weight. Mm -hmm. I was known for for having that, you know that form, mm -hmm. and that's what I tell guys. Your training is going to develop the type of muscle that you need. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want that kind of like skinny long muscle that when you turn to the side you just go gone, mm -hmm. I said that's what you're gonna look like. Yeah, but if you want that that roundness, that density, that separation, I said, you're going to have to kill yourself. Yeah. And that's what a lot of guys don't want to do. Yeah. They get a taste of it. They're like, oh, that's hard. Mm. Well, they'll do it once. And then you've seen this. They'll come train with you. And then they don't hit you back up anymore. Yeah, no, it's done. <laughs> it's done. I remember Charles Glass got some of those, those workouts too. So, yeah. And it, now, how did that affect you, man? Because I, I remember seeing you at a competition once. And then the first time you were telling me that you got up with crutches, I was like, dude, bro, what happened? And I noticed a whole different shift in energy in you. How did that affect you going through that? Like, how, how, like, what did you do to come up out of that? Because I know that was a hard thing to do. Because now it's like, I, yeah, you were kind of on your way out. You were done, but not like that. I know you didn't want it to go like that. No. There's no way. So how did, how did you feel? Like, how did you overcome coming through an injury like this? Because I know there's a lot of people out there that, you know, might be tearing things right now or about to tear something that's going to see this video. And they're going to want to know, like, how, how did you do it? How did you come through it? How did you motivate yourself to become back to normal Horicio, the one guy I know, you know? Discipline. Yeah. Screw motivation. Yeah. You can go on YouTube and watch a video that's going to motivate you. It's a motivational speaker that's going to mm -hmm. tell you to get up off your bed and, mm -hmm. you know, you know, screw the world. That kind of helps when I'm motivated. That helps when I'm motivated. It doesn't help me get motivated. <laughs> I, um, yeah. I, I, I don't listen to motivational speakers. I don't watch motivational videos. Um, I don't do any of that. And the reason why is because somebody is writing that based on how they feel. Yeah, I honestly think a lot of those videos are kind of just handwritten and then they'll yeah. come up, you know. Like, it doesn't work for me. Yeah. Like, what is that guy focusing on? Whatever he's going to focus on. Being motivated or saying motivational stuff. His yeah. motivation is coming from being motivational. So that's, that's, like a, that's like you being a bodybuilder. It's the same thing. It's like, you know, that's that's his job. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to, not, well, it does help certain people. Certain people are helped by it. Certain people certain do. Certain people are helped Certain by people it. do, but yeah. I don't, I don't. I'm not don't, taking away anything. I don't depend on that. No, you can't. I depend on the ability to sit there mm -hmm. and say, what am I going to do? Right. If I don't know how to do it, I better figure it out. Right. And that's how this was. How long did that go for? My recovery was, was about a year. Wow. A year. Yeah. And that's both quads being. So I had to lose weight while I was in bed because I weighed so much that my, my legs uh, weren't going to be able to sustain my upper body. Wow. So I had to start dieting right. during, during that too, and which wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't hard, but it also was like, no comfort. I don't want to do this right now. Yeah. yeah. You know? Um, so there came a point where I wouldn't eat at all. Mm -hmm. I don't, when, you, when you're food is energy. Mm -hmm. If you're not, if you're not putting out energy, then you can't consume all this food and expect your body to just burn it off, especially mm -hmm. if you understand how food works. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, I can't sit here and just eat cheeseburgers and McDonald's whenever I want. I said, I'm going to get fat. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to be good because I need to get up to start walking. Mm -hmm. And so kind of clean my diet up and stuff. And, um, and then day by day, I would watch the sun go up and I'd watch the sun go down. Yeah. You know, And if I needed something, I had a, like a long pole. Right. And I'd had a, I had a knock on the wall, um, because I had to get back. They brought me back to my parents' house. Really, you had yeah. to knock on the wall because getting up and down wasn't an easy task. So I couldn't move. But I still saw you at bodybuilding shows. So that was after when I was in my like my walker. Oh wow, that was after. So how long did you have to sit there with torn quads without being able to move? How long? Uh, in bed, uh, probably about a month. Wow, that must have been awful. And that's. That I couldn't even take a shower. Wow. My mom had to give me a sponge bath. Really? Yeah. Because my legs were so big that they couldn't cast me. 
So they had to wrap me, and then they had to put uh, bands over, mm -hmm. and then this like giant sleeve that looked like a giant taco. Oh my god! And then under all that, there was a uh, metal braces for my hips all the way down to my ankle. Ooh. So my legs were just straight, consistent. They couldn't be bent because what happened was when they drilled through my kneecap, they pulled, um, they pulled the uh, the tear down, and then reattached it because I tore them off the patella tendon. Oh, wow. So like my That's straight muscle up off the, bellies, the patella. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I didn't tear the muscle bellies, which is yeah, is great. Yeah, thank goodness. Um, but came right off on top of the kneecap. And because um, even after like the day that I that I tore them, I was like still walking, mm. but I couldn't walk with my knees being bent. I had to walk with like kind of like stilts. Oh okay. Um, and that's how I got around until they took me into surgery a couple of days later. Wow, man. Um, but it it was. It was, uh, it, it's honestly, it's really hard to explain because it, it, so many emotions go through it where you're just like, man, I just want to go for a walk. Right. You know, I just want to go for a walk. I just want to go for a drive. Like right. you actually start to miss the the small things, the simple yeah. things. Like there's a park around the corner. Let me, I'll go sit at the park and just yeah. see people. I couldn't sit in there anymore. And that's yeah. the part that drove me crazy. And that was the hardest part for me. Yeah. It wasn't even going to the gym. Wow. I didn't care about that. I just wanted to get out of the house. Yeah. You know, I just wanted to go somewhere, you know, like when you get comfortable and you start doing things on your own and people invite you places, you're like, nah, nah, I'm good. Mm. You know, um, you start to even miss that. Like, man, like right. nobody wants to hang out with me, mm. you know, because I basically built my life around bodybuilding mm. that everybody knew me as like, oh, he doesn't go out. Yeah. He didn't do this. He didn't do that. Yeah. So people stop asking. <laughs> Well, that's what successful people do. They don't hang out with people that like, yeah. want to hang out anyway. So you already had your zone. You were already dedicated to your craft. You were already locked in. So, you know, yeah, and then plus it doubles down on your injury, which you're already not going to do anything anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, so no one's going to come. You don't build relationships like that. But <laughs> also the people you go out and party with aren't exactly the people that are going to call you anyway. Oh, absolutely. So, you, I mean, yeah, you probably were stuck with, like, you know, that. But, man, just for, to be able to see you come back. And to be able to make you, you, you have such a journey and, and be start to become successful all over again in a whole new genre and atmosphere, whether or not be competing, but to be able to see that transition from you, to be able to be training with all these people that we know, these 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 highly successful influencers or these people that really are making an impact on people's lives, you being one of them, it's gotta be one of the one of the stories that I'm most happy to tell about. You know, it Thank really you. does because like it, it's not an easy injury to come back losing pretty much everything that you were and then being able to come back and just destroy a whole nother obstacle or a whole nother avenue of this sport. So yeah. my hat is off to you, brother. Thank man. you. And I, I got to give it to you. So Thank you. Horacio, man, it's been a pleasure. It's been a complete and utterly big time pleasure, brother, as always, man. Always good to see you, man. And, uh, man, I hope to hear some more and have you back on the show. Oh, absolutely. Right. And thank you for having me. Big Daddy Swoles TV. We out. We out. The Big Daddy.